So I've gotten into wool hangings recently. I find them super enjoyable to make. I love the way they look and I've been having a really great time. And once I started posting more about them, I noticed that you guys have plenty of questions. So I thought I'd make a video answering you guys top questions about how to make wool hangings. So these are two of my most recent wool hangings. The patterns for both of these are gonna be linked in the description if you wanna make them for yourself. And for the one on the right, I did an entire Not With Me video where you can watch the entire process of me making this bracelet from start to finish. And I'll leave that linked in the card and in the description if you wanna watch that as well. In this video, I'm gonna be covering alpha wool hangings specifically because I don't really have experience with normal wool hangings. And there are slight differences, although probably the majority of what I say here is going to apply to normal wool hangings as well. I still would rather focus my attention on alphas specifically because that's just what I have experience with. There's gonna be timestamps in the description of this video so you can skip around and get to the topic that you want to see covered. But with all that said, let's jump into it. So as you can see, wool hangings are made on these wooden sticks. They are called wooden dowels. And this is what wool hangings, at least in the world of French, bracelets are typically made on. These are the variety that I got. Got a pack of 100 off of Amazon. They're 15 centimeters long with a diameter of four millimeters. And they're nothing special, just a pack of wooden dowels. So as I mentioned, I got mine off Amazon. I've heard from other people that you can also get them in craft stores, sometimes even building stores sell wooden dowels and on places online. But you also don't have to use a wooden dowel. You can use anything that you feel like. A lot of people use the same techniques for keychains, for example. I've seen people use pencils, even toothpicks, although I would be careful with those because they can snap quite easily. Seeing people use knitting needles, basically anything that's straight and is the right diameter and length for you, feel free to use whatever you want. Right, so let's talk about patterns. With these two wool hangings, I was pretty lucky because the pattern itself was basically all I wanted to make, so I didn't need to cut the pattern at all. But there are still things that you want to keep in mind when looking at the pattern to create a wool hanging, so let's go over them. So let's look at the easiest example, this mushroom house. As I said, when creating this wool hanging, I wanted to use the entirety of the pattern, so I didn't actually need to cut the pattern into pieces to make it fit the design. With that out of the way, you need to focus on the dimensions. Figure out which way you want to create your design, vertically or horizontally. For this specific pattern, the case was pretty obvious. I wanted to make it vertically so that the mushroom top is at the top and the mushroom bottom is at the bottom. You want to pay very close attention to the dimensions of the pattern. In this case, it's 49 by 51. And you need to determine which of that is going to be the number of base strings and which is going to be the number of rows. In this specific case, the number of base strings is 49 and the number of rows is 51, since the design is longer than it is wide. Let's look at the other pattern. Once again, for this pattern, I wanted to create the entirety of the design, so I didn't need to cut anything. But here, the situation with the orientation is a little bit different. I wanted to create the design as it is in the preview of the pattern, so that the stingray is horizontal. And with the dimensions of 29 by 43, this pattern is wider, so 43 is going to be the number of base strings, and 29 the number of rows. However, on this website, if you look down on the actual pattern, broken down into knots, it flips the pattern pattern on its side, and that's not how I want to create the design for the wall hanging. So pay attention to the dimensions and make sure to figure out which of those you want to be the base strings and which you want to be the rows, because that is what determines the orientation of the pattern, whether it be horizontal or vertical. Personally, I prefer reading alpha patterns in the not pattern version, but since the website defaults to making the shorter side the number of base strings, this doesn't fit me in this case because that flips the pattern on its side. And so for this pattern, I had to resort to following the grid pattern which isn't a problem because you can still follow that pattern if you know how to make alpha patterns. And if you don't, you should watch my tutorial on that, which is separate and will be linked in the card and in the description. It's not a problem, it's just something that you need to keep in mind. But what if I do want to cut a pattern? Let's look at this one, for example. This pattern has a lot of background rows, too many for my liking. And because the pattern preview in the knotted format is also flipped on its side and I want to make this horizontally rather than vertically, I need to read the grid pattern to create this design. What I would recommend doing in this situation is simply taking a screenshot. You could just remember how many knots you want to leave on either side and in this case I would leave one or two rows either side but if you rely solely on your memory you run the risk of making a mistake so I would recommend just taking a screenshot and physically just cutting out the number of rows that you need make sure to count several times how many base strings you're going to require especially if you cut your pattern because nothing is more annoying in making bracelets than when you start making something and realize that your number of base strings is incorrect so make sure to check count and double check so, talking a little bit further about dimensions. Let's move back to this pattern. So for this pattern, the dimensions are 29 by 43. As I mentioned previously, based on which of those dimensions you decide is going to be the base strings, that determines the orientation of your pattern. In this specific case, if I want the stingray to be horizontal, as I showed you in the wall hanging that I eventually created, I would take the 43 to be the number of base strings. And you might be hearing 43, realizing that it's an odd number, and thinking to yourself, how would I attach an odd number of strings 
to my dowel. In fact, it's a good thing when you have an odd number of bass strings because you also need a leading string. I tend to make my bass strings and my leading strings the same color, at least the leading string for the first row and the background. And so it ends up being a cohesive color for the top row for me. You don't have to do this, but if you do take separate colors, the two leftmost strings would have to be the same color because you need one for the bass string and one for the leading string. I'll get more into that when I actually demonstrate. But what I'm saying is that when you have an odd number of bass strings on your wall hanging, that's a good thing because you also need a bass string, which adds one string to the mix, making an even number, which is easier to attach to a wall hanging. So you might be thinking, what if I need an even number of bass strings? I still need a leading string and that makes it an odd number. Yes, and that's a little bit annoying, but it's something that we can work with and I'll get into that in one of the next sections. All right, so now that we've talked about our patterns, let's talk about our strings and how to attach them. But first, how long do you need the strings to be? This all depends on personal preference really and how tight you make your knots. It's kind of easy to estimate how long a pattern is going to be. If you've made any alpha pattern before, especially if you've made alpha patterns with the string type that you're about to use, you can just take a ruler, attach it to whatever you've already created and see how many rows are in one centimeter. In my case, it's exactly six rows. So I knot at a length of six rows per centimeter. You can then look back at your pattern, see how many rows you need to make for that design and calculate how long your design will be. So you definitely need at least that amount of length. I would also add probably another seven to 10 centimeters to make the ties. Depending on what kind of tie you make, you might need more. I'll talk more about that at the end. And then I'd probably also add another 10 centimeters purely for grip. You're not really going to use that amount of string. You're probably gonna end up cutting it off, but you do need some amount of grip to actually be able to knot the pattern. If you wanna use your strings as efficiently as possible, you're gonna end up with tiny little short strings at the very end, which is gonna be very annoying to work with and might damage your design skewing it a little bit. So I would definitely leave some for grip. And yes, technically it's a waste of string, but keep the scraps. You can use your scraps in other projects. In fact, I did an entire video dedicated to how you can reuse your scraps in friendship bracelets. I'll leave that video also linked in the card and in the description so you can watch that later. So they're not really going to waste and you really do need something to grip onto. So it's all personal preference. Try and figure out how much you're going to need. If you're unsure, I would recommend going with a little bit of a longer side just to be safe. But you also have to make sure to double whatever calculations you've made because you're going to fold your strings in half, essentially creating two. So if you've decided that you want say 30 centimeters, make that 60 because you're then gonna fold it to create two strings of 30. And not only that, but make sure that one of your strings is extra long. So all of my strings meet at a point on this side, but on the other side, I've got one string that is extra, extra long. And that's the one that's going to be the leading string. And you want that one to be extra long since you know, you're gonna use it more and you're gonna have to end up replacing it eventually anyway. So you just wanna make it extra long to, to avoid replacing it earlier on. All right, so let's talk about how to attach these strings to the dowel. I mentioned this already before, but count your strings. Count the strings that you have, count the strings that you need in the pattern. Count them, count them again, and then count them again because it is so annoying when you're starting to make a design and you realize that you've miscalculated either on the pattern or when you were cutting your strings. It is the worst feeling in bracelet making. So definitely, definitely try to avoid that by counting on your pattern and then on your strings multiple times. All right, so the knots that we're going to be using are the Lark's Head Knots, which I will be demonstrating here, but if you need a more in-depth look on how to make those knots and other types of knots, I did a basic knots video a while ago, and in that video, I go into real detail about how to make these knots, which will also be linked in the card and in the description. All right, you wanna start by taking the longer string that you created, the one that's extra long because it's going to be your leading string. You wanna put the shorter side on the left and the longer side on the right. You're then gonna take your dowel, you're gonna put the strings behind the dowel, then take this loop, flip it over, grab these two strings and pull them through that loop and then you're simply going to tighten. And there you go, you've attached your strings to your dowel. The shorter string should be on the left, the longer string should be on the right. This is if you're following the straight edge technique or alphas where you do backward forward knots on the left side. If you're not doing that, then the longer one will be on the left since you're just gonna go in forward knots. But because I am, the longer one is going on the right since I'm gonna start with a backward forward knot and only then go to the right in forward knots. Hope that makes sense. If it doesn't, I explain the straight edge technique in my alpha tutorial as well in more detail. With that done, you're gonna take every single other string and do the same. So all of the strings you cut, you're gonna take one by one and you're gonna do lark's head knots onto the dowel, attaching them one by one. So let me show you once again. You wanna take this loop, put it behind the dowel. You then wanna flip the loop over, grab the two strings and pull them through the loop. 
and then simply tighten. And then you can move that to the left. And now you've got four strings. All right, so I'm gonna go attach every single one of the strings that I cut and I'll be right back with you. So once you've attached all of your strings, you need to attach your dowel to your workspace. And this is how I do it. I make sure to attach any strings that I'm gonna need within the first few rows to the back of the surface behind the dowel. And then I simply just attach the dowel with two strips of tape. And that way I can pull on it, not too tightly, but I can, and I can start working on my design. As I mentioned, the leading string is going to be the second string if you're following the straight edge technique and you're gonna go in with a backward forward knot and then with forward knots following your pattern. At this point I can't really help you, you just need to follow the design and if you don't know how to make alpha patterns and if you don't know how to follow them, as I mentioned previously I have a separate tutorial on that which is linked in the description. So I mentioned I would talk about this later on in the video and now is the time. What do you do if you've got an extra bass string? It's basically the same thing as with a new string for example. If I'm going to be tying in a new string within the first couple of rows, I'm going to have this little tail sticking out the back. Same thing for when you have an extra string. If you've got an extra string that you don't need, simply pull it out and put it behind your wall hanging. Make the make the knots excluding that string, and then it's gonna be sticking out from the back, similarly to how a tail would if you would tie in a new string. Now, once you've made a few rows after that and you're comfortable with your creation, you can go ahead and just snip those strings from the back, or if you're not comfortable with that, you can also just glue them to the back of your wall hanging. So if I had an extra string coming out from here somewhere, I could just push it down to the back of my wall hanging and use a little bit of glue to stick it on. And that's all about starting your wall hanging. Now let's talk about finishing. It. I never do anything particularly special with my wall hangings. I just divide my base strings into equal portions and then just tie a simple knot at the end and then cut them all off to be the same length. This is my preferred method of doing it, but there are plenty of other methods out there. Wall hangings are very common within the macrame world and there's plenty of tutorials on how to make different endings for them within that community. As I'm not very experienced in the topic, I won't be teaching you how to do this, but I will be linking some tutorials that I found in the description and you can also feel free to just search for macrame wall hanging endings on YouTube for yourself. Same goes for actually hanging your wall hanging. I've never actually done that because I never display my works. I just like making them. So I'm not particularly experienced in this field, but because this is a very common practice in the macrame world, there are plenty of different ways that you can attach a string to be able to hang your wall hanging. And once again, I'm not super experienced in this, but I will be leaving links in the description to some tutorials that I found. And you're also free to search it up on YouTube yourself. And that's it for my explanation video on wall hangings. I hope I answered your questions. If you've still got questions left over, feel free to ask them in the comments and I will try my best to answer them as well. If you happen to be watching this in February of 21, there is currently a monthly challenge going in which I have tasked you to create a wall hanging. Check out my January wrap up, which I'll link in the description of this video for the rules on how to enter. But in any case, I hope you enjoyed today's video. And before I go, I want to give a special shout out to my patrons and especially my top supporters whose names are going to appear on screen. Thank you guys so much for your support. I truly, truly appreciate it. If you also want to become a patron, there is a link in the description where you can sign up and get exclusive perks for your donations. It is with my Patreon support that I'm able to create these videos, so I'm massively grateful for them. If you don't know, I also have a second channel, which is Masha Doesn't Not, same as my personal Instagram handle, by the way, and that second channel is linked in the description. I recently posted a video answering questions about what it's like to be a YouTuber. I'll leave that video linked in the card and in the description as well for you to check out. I post non-bracelet related conversational type content over on that channel, and if that sounds like something you would enjoy, I'd love to see you there. But all that being said, I hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope you learned something new from it and I will see you in my next video. Bye!